guys, it's Thomas here, and on this episode of the High Tech Planet Tank, we're talking Aquascape, and more specifically, the Hardscape, which, aha, uh -huh, rocks, because I used stone again. So for this build, I really wanted to focus on a nice, uh, beautiful mat of carpeting plants, and for that to be kind of the main focus of the tank, and then kind of use some deep red and purple plants as an accent to also show how beautiful they can be and how using CO2 can help you achieve that. Uh, so the hardscape itself, I kept very simplistic because I want to keep the focus on the softscape or the plants. Plants are called softscape. Hardscape is like the structures and then the plants are the soft part. In the low-tech series, I talked about two different ways you can go about aquascaping. One is to have a preconceived idea, maybe even a sketch of what you'd like your aquascape to look like. And the other way is to basically find some hardscape materials that you just really love the look of and appreciate for what they are, and then let them sort of dictate how they fall into your aquascape in the aquarium. That way you're not fighting a preconceived idea and you don't end up disappointed because it didn't turn out exactly like you had envisioned it. And you can just appreciate what you've come up with with those materials that you love. On the low tech series, I used the latter method. So on the high tech series, I thought I would try something a little different with a preconceived idea. I did, however, want to stick to uh, rock as the main hardscape material, just so that, again, it, it'll be a good visual comparison between the two tanks. Um, for the same reason I didn't want to use driftwood in the low tech tank, I don't want to use it in the high tech tank. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that. Driftwood is gonna put tannins in the water. You have to waterlog it uh, for it to stay down and stay in place, which can be uh, time consuming. And over time, which can be many years, but it'll break down slowly and it can cause your filter and stuff to clog. So I just thought I'd avoid it and I would go with rock again. So my simple idea for this scape was to have a hill with a raised platform. The hill itself will be covered in carpeting plants along with the bottom of the tank. And then that raised platform, I would put those nice red and purple, most likely stem plants that would grow up nice and tall. And then I could use trimming to uh, get that part of the soft scape to kind of raise the entire aquascape up. Because as you can see, it's kind of shallow in the tank. It only comes up about halfway. I accomplished that by taking a variety of different shaped stone. Um, and I sort of stacked it in a semicircle from the back of the aquarium around to the side of the aquarium. It created a sort of pot that I could fill with substrate. The substrate then just kind of cascades down the side of the rock work, and thus my platform is made. I like how it turned out. Looks pretty cool. Can't wait to plant it. Think it'll look even better. Since I am using compressed CO2 on this system, along with strong lighting and uh, good fertilization and substrate, I can expect pretty rapid growth out of my plants, which is going to lend to that um, being able to softscape the tank quite easily by trimming. Since the plants are going to grow so fast, I can use that growth uh, to my advantage by trimming all the plants up to create more interesting kind of shapes and uh, textures to the entire aquascape. So I know right now it looks pretty flat, but if you can imagine, the carpeting plants can even be trimmed to create little hills and different levels, uh, and then the stem plants, the same thing. So it might look simple now, but it should look really cool with the plants. I find in my experience that using stones in this way helps the novice aquascaper, because let's face it, I'm no pro, uh, kind of come up with a aquascape without really having to pay too much attention to the rule of thirds or the golden ratio or anything like that because um, any mistakes or uh, you know things that kind of stick out funny uh, that happen in the hardscape will quickly get kind of covered up and uh, blended together once the softscape starts growing. All those carpeting plants that are going to join the, the seams of the rock work so to speak are kind of going to make that rock work seem as though it's one big piece of stone jutting out uh, of a hill or something or a hillside. Uh, so you won't see as much of your perceived mistakes in your aquascape and you can focus on using, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be trying to do with this. Uh, you can focus on using the sawscape to create more balance within the tank. So if you are intimidated by the idea of getting that perfect hardscape, this method is probably a good one for you to start with. So the rock I chose for this scape is mini landscape rock, also known as, hopefully I'm saying this right, Siriu stone, Sirayu stone, a stone. Um, 
It's a very popular stone, uh, especially for this kind of setup. That's not why I picked it, though, necessarily. I really like the fact that it looks super ancient and weathered. It's got a lot of texture for a very small stone, very similar to why I picked the maple leaf rock for the other tank. But one thing I really love about this rock is that once you get it uh, in a system that is covered with carpeting plants, and the carpeting plants have grown in and around it and over it, they, they really do look like a tiny ancient landscape that it's been there for bajillions of years and um, it has a very serene look to it. And I wanted to try to replicate that in this system. So that is the rock that I thought would best do it. I also really love the fact that it is a gray stone, light gray in color and really fits the monochrome uh, stainless steel look of this system. I've got some stainless steel pipes. I've got some stainless steel equipment. I've got a stand that is white with gray accents. So it fits right in. Uh, I'd also mention though, however, you gotta be careful if you want to run a low pH system because Siriu stone, again, hope I'm saying it right, um, it is not completely inert. Uh, it is a type of li limestone. And from my understanding, it's going to, from all reading I've done, it's going to raise your pH uh, to at least seven and in and around seven. It shouldn't get too much higher than that, but it will add quite a bit of KH and GH to the water. So I'm going to have to choose what livestock I put in this tank uh, with that in mind so that I'm making sure they're getting the best environment. Uh, fish that are going to prefer, uh, you know, pHs that are going to be in 6 to 6.5, etc. This is not the stone you want to use. You're going to definitely want to find something that is inert uh, and will not react in a lower pH environment. I was willing to make the sacrifice. I'm sure you remember in the last episode on Substrate, I talked about the Tropica Aquarium Soil Powder, the thinner version. I wanted to use that where I was going to be putting a carpeting plants so their delicate little roots had something nice and fine to hold on to that would be easy to plant them in. So now that I have the scape done, I know where those plants are going to be going in my mind's eye, and I can add that soil powder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Because my intake from the filter reaches almost to the bottom of the tank, when I was building out the hill, I had to make sure it was justified to the right side of the aquarium so that I wouldn't interfere with the filter's ability to take in water or accidentally cover part of the pipe with that hill structure. I wanted that platform to be pretty decently high and I'm sure you could tell by looking at it, had I had it on the other side of the tank, that thing would have been covered in dirt, which wouldn't have been good. So that's why it is the way it is. So now that we've got an awesome little aquascape in this tank, I think it's high time we move on to a subject that I'm sure you've all been waiting for. I've been alluding to it since the beginning of this series, and that is in fact pressurized CO2, what I'm gonna be using on this system for pressurized CO2, how it works in general, and how you can set one up, because uh, I think that's pretty good information for a high-tech planet tank, don't you? So if you have any questions about anything we've talked about, either today or another day or in the future, drop those down in the comment section below, especially if you're a time traveler, I'd like to get to know ya. And feel free to reach out to us on social media like Facebook or check out our Instagram where we've got all kinds of aquatic eye candy for you. Don't forget to subscribe, again, especially if you're a time traveler because I'd like to get to know you because uh, I don't want you to miss any of this stuff, although you've probably already seen it, time traveler. And as always, keep on tanking. Now, the past, the future, wherever you are, time traveler. Stone, rock, boulder, hill, cliff, Landscape, uh, mountain, miniature. I'm all out of puns. I'm all out of puns. I'm so lost without you. Oh, this is recording. <laughs>